Hey, what's up? Good to see you guys there. Let's talk about active versus passive insufficiency. Okay, check this out. When I flex my forearm all the way, as far as it can go, watch what happens when I also flex my fingers. Do you guys see that? Right here. Okay, flexing the forearm. Now I want to flex my fingers as well. Oh, I can't do it. Oh, not quite there, right? So there's a passive insufficiency on this aspect of my wrist because of my wrist and finger extensors. They're not quite long enough. Watch again. Oh, you guys see that elevation? You see that slight wrist flexion there? So that's an example of passive insufficiency. Now on the other hand, active insufficiency of the wrist flexors. If I were to grip something with my wrist already flexed and I try to squeeze it, my wrist flexors will run out of room. They'll Literally, the sarcomeres just run into each other. The Z-line to Z-line distance between sarcomeres is maximally shortened. And because of that, the musculature cannot contract, it cannot shorten any further. So the contractile units, the actin and the myosin, they run out of cross-bridge binding sites. The potential for actin and myosin cross-bridging goes down when I'm maximally shortened like this. And so grip strength here is not as strong as grip strength here with a neutral wrist, okay? Does that make sense? So passive insufficiency of my wrist extensors happens when I'm trying to both flex my wrist and my fingers. And at the same time, during this movement, active insufficiency is happening with my wrist flexors because they cannot further shorten beyond what the sarcomeres allow them to. Plus, there's less actinomycin cross-bridging. Now, the same thing happens with your rectus femoris and your hamstring musculature. Okay, and what we have in common in all four of these muscle groups that we're talking about, wrist extensors, wrist flexors, rectus femoris, and the hamstring musculature, is that they are biarticulate muscles, meaning that they cross two joints, not just one, but two. Okay, and because they cross two joints, they have to control the range of motion at both of those joints. So, if I were to stand and do a standing leg raise, right, stand up with my hip flexed, and that's that will elevate my knee and I want to also extend my, actually, you know what, I'll just show you. Okay, here we go. Hip flexion and knee flexion. If I want to also undergo knee extension, then oh, I'm gonna run out of room real quick. Okay, because Dr. Gooden does not have the best hamstring flexibility. Boom, there's a passive insufficiency massively right there because my hamstring musculature just doesn't have the flexibility to allow further extension of my knee. Okay, does that make sense? So the hamstrings, because they originate at the ischial tuberosity and they're inserting medially and laterally on my knee, we'll get into exact insertion points later in the semester, they run that full length and when I'm flexing at the hip and extending at the knee, boom, boom, it's maximally stretching the hamstring at both, at both ends. Okay, and so that's passive insufficiency. Now, active insufficiency, if I had a more flexible hamstring, I could show this to you. And I'm sure somebody that you know could, could demonstrate this, who maybe they do yoga or more likely that they're female because they're more flexible. But maybe, uh, maybe you can do this. <clears throat> if my hamstring was more flexible and it allows me, allowed me to fully extend my knee, well, I would quickly run into active insufficiency of my rectus femoris because rectus femoris, it crosses the knee and the hip as well. Okay, and so it flexes the knee and extends at the hip. And when I'm trying to do both of those actions at once, it, again, just like my, my finger and wrist flexors, it runs out of room to continue shortening. The sarcomeres actually run into each other. They maximally shorten, and the actinomyosin cannot find continued purchase with their cross bridge binding sites. Whew. Okay, does that make sense? Hopefully it does. Active versus passive insufficiency. It's a really cool phenomena of the human body. All right, well that was a good chat. Good seeing you guys. I'll see you all next time. If I were to grip something, let's say my finger, right? Pull my finger.